so this is uh, okay so now i will quickly define what is called k p variety okay so for that uh, see see mostly i was talking about sheaf of abelian groups but you can talk about sheaf of sets so like a sheaf of k um, Okay, let's not um, go into such deep thing, uh, such a generality. But I'll just say, huh, I'm not right. Uh, that see, we have seen the sheaf of abelian groups, but uh, you can see sometime uh, if you have a topological space, you can define what is called a, a sheaf of, for example, regular functions. This is a K algebra. But once you have K algebra, you can define, define sheaf of OX modules. What is it? So, for every open set, you have some MU, which is a OXU module. So, this is o, this OX is a sheaf of OX algebra, sheaf of K algebra. For example, <coughs> you take example is that you take the affine variety, X is affine variety. So, you take some X is some. Meh, some k of x, all right, a maximal ideal of some finitely generated k algebra. Then you define this OX, the structure shift. So, what is OX? The regular functions on x. So, OX of u is regular functions on u. So, in particular, so the, the basis is the basic open sets which are of the form D of f. So, if this guy is called A, say, A is the ring. Then this is nothing but E of F, the localization at F, right. These are the regular functions on A, uh, A. for example, if you take A to be K x1, x2, xn. So, this is the K x1, x2, xn and localization at F, okay. So, now, so, but you see this, this K, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a OX is a, OX has a ring structure or it has a K algebra structure because A is a K algebra. So, localization AF is a K algebra. Every OXU is a K algebra. It's a form. Right. Now, you can talk about MU, which is a K, uh, OXU module. I say it is a sheaf of OX module. If MU is a OXU module, that means what? That means there is a map. And of course, there is obvious restriction map from MU to MV. If you, V is an open subset of U, you have MU to MV map. But that map should satisfy some property that because this guy is a OXU module, this guy is a OXV module. Hmm. So there should be something like if you take AF and if you take M, so F is in uh, OXU and M is in o, uh, MU. So, you have this restriction to V and you have the restriction uh, on V and you M also you have restriction to V. This, uh, so, they should be same, right. So, then you call it all it is a sheaf of OX modules. <coughs> okay, and among these sheaf of OX module, OX module, if you say is a locally free sheaf of OX module. They are called, they are the vector bundles. Or if you take it's a finitely generated OX modules. So mostly we work with finitely generated. These are coherent sheaves of OX modules. If you don't assume the co uh, the finitely generated OX, it's called quasi coherent sheaves of OX modules. So these are all generalization and. We, in this generality, people work, right. So, but I am not going into detail of this definition. I will just say in words that this one can more generally, you can talk about sheaf of OX modules, not as sheaf of abelian groups, but sheaf of OX module where OX, OX is a sheaf of K algebra. This is a, in this generality, generally one can, because you have 
all the machinery i mean it is useful to okay so now i will what i, I define what is called pre varieties so suppose <coughs> x uh, y topological space or suppose x is a topological space hmm. and I define f x is a uh, sheaf of um, sheaf of k valued function k is some field say you see. Uh, I do not assume any uh, sheaf of abelian group or anything I just consider it a sheaf of set, sets f x is just a sheaf of set sheaf of sets where whose uh, uh, <coughs> elements are k valued functions set function yes and if you have a map from phi x to y similarly for uh, this is for a for every topological space i associate this sheaf f x sheaf of k valued function so if i have a morphism from x to y suppose x and y are topological space and if this is continuous Then I have a natural, then there is a natural map phi upper star I write f of y to phi lower star of fx. To define a map, I need to define what is f of y u to I have to define phi lower star of fx of u, but this is nothing but f x of phi inverse u, right. So, if I say, so, so now what is the element, if you take a element here a f here, so it is a map from u to k, because after all it is a, uh, it is a sheaf of k valued function. So, what I do, I, I consider phi inverse u. compose it then I get a map. So, this is f going to f composition phi. So, naturally I get a map from if I have a map of topological space naturally I get a map from f y to phi lower star of f x for a, this happens for every u right. <clears throat> now, a k space is a is by a k space we mean x o x where x is a topological space. and O x is a sheaf of k algebras. So, see here f x I did not assume it is a k, k algebra, but here I am assuming k algebras sheaf of k algebra um, which is a sub sheaf as a set, it is a sheaf of k algebra, it is also a sheaf of sets, right. So, as a sheaf of sets which is a which is a sub sheaf of f x. Right. And morphism between 
uh, two k space say x o x suppose x o x is a k space and y o y is a k space. So I define a map. So it's a map. So f f upper star. So it's a map from x to y. Such that this f upper star of O y will be in f lower star of O x. See if O o y is a subshift of f y, right? So by this a sorry, what I am writing. Yes, yes, fine. So, so this is this is the image of f upper star. Okay, this is f. So O y is a subshift of uh, f y, and of course this is f lower star of f of x. So we know this is we know by definition that f upper star of f y. Is uh, it's a map from f upper star is a map from f y to f lower star of f x. So it is in this. But what I am saying that it's a map of k space. If you take this shift of k, this is this is a subset. If this o y goes to f lower star of o x, so our shift of regular. So these are so this is I this is my uh, my functions basically regular functions. So regular functions goes to regular functions in some sense. Say map of variety, affine varieties, or anything. It is not just map of topological space. It talks about the map of functions also. You should take the regular functions to regular functions, right? That's how you define morphism. So this is the the second proper. This is the proper point. Shift theoretically, it sends regular functions to regular functions, right? This is how you define morphism between affine varieties. So this is the. So now a pre-variety I'll just define and then I'll stop. Pre-variety. Over K. Is an now I assume irreducible. I find this is an irreducible. K space x o x such that x is union of u i i equal to one to n open cover and this u i. O x restricted. O x is a sheaf of k algebra, so I can restrict to open subset. Is an affine variety. So on. So note that if you have a affine variety, say u i is some given by some spec of m. Like just now I said, if we, if it is some finitely generated algebra. Then I define the uh, the o o of u i on this d of f to be a f, and this is a shift. This shift of regular functions, basically. So this is the abstract variety now for me. So abstract variety is a k space. Locally, looks like an affine variety, <coughs> and now point is that how do you construct such pre-variety? So the obvious way of constructing is that first you you suppose x is a set, so you 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 take some union u i, it is union of some aff affine variety as a set theoretically. Now you induce the structure or the constructor O x 
using the regular functions from ui that's how even in manifold when you see the definition of manifold how did you see how did you construct a manifold locally there are some open subsets of rn and then you pull back the structure from there whatever holomorphy exactly same same philosophy so here you have these uis which are affine varieties and now you glue these uis and construct a abstract variety but when you talk about morphism you talk in, in this generality a morphism means it's a k space or x OA, ox is a k algebra oy is a k algebra so it's a sheep it's a map of two things one is just that map of topological space and another one is a map of functions and map of topological space is related to the map of functions okay i'll stop here and probably i'll from the next class onwards i'll uh, i'll come down little bit now i'll i'll not go into any abstraction now i'll go to more examples and do but this is required so as i said that even to solve farmer's uh, last year one has to do shimura variety and all right so not in very detail we, when you do cohomology theory you will have to do in detail but just to this is just to, uh, to define free variety i need this uh, sheaves otherwise i cannot do that's why i introduce